so we're just tacking up the batten to represent our shear line, the top edge of our planking. We've obviously got the, the points of the shear line marked on our moulds where our cross beams fit. We've got the shear line marked on our stem pattern. I'll try and clamp that there rather than put nails in. And it's just really a question of seeing how many of the marks it lines up with and and what gives us a nice curve, hopefully lifting towards the bow, meeting most of our lines. It's best not to start at one end and nail, 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 nail all the way around because you can distort it and then you aren't sure which nail you need to pull out to fair the batten up. So it's good just to let it hang there between a couple of points. Look at it several times. See what you think. And then if you think it's something like it, just put a couple more tacks in. As it happened, it hasn't really moved. But that's looking pretty reasonable. The line of the, the batten there is just distorted a little bit because of the way it's been clamped around the stem. But, um, it's looking, it's right. Isn't it? Using the, the flank widths we've got, trying to even up. even up the measurements that they gave us, or we took from the moulds. And if we do that midships, hopefully the planks landing on the stem will all be similar widths. Planks landing on the transom are going to be similar widths, although maybe slightly narrower in the sharper turns. So if we start here and see how we uh, get on, the top four planks really are the ones that are most visible because they're seen, they're above the water line. When you look at the side view of the boat, those are the four you see. So we really want to try and get those even, allowing for any rubbing straights that we're going to fit. We're going to fit a rubbing straight to the top plank. So our boat is going to look like that. Two planks, three planks, four planks. And so what we're aiming for is for that distance there. That distance there. That distance there, and that distance there, so will be pretty equal. If we allow an inch for that rubbing strike at the top, and we're aiming to come one, two, three, four planks down. These, these marks are the top of the inside plank. So our outside plank
will come down further. The amount of the overlap, which will be about 11 sixteenths of an inch. <coughs> run down there. We're talking about 15 and a quarter inches. So this entire depth there is 15 and a quarter. We take off an inch for the rolling straight at the top, which brings it down to 14 and a quarter. Divide that by four, which is just a fraction over three and a half inches showing per plank. So from our shear line at the top, come down an inch for our rubbing strake, then we come down three and a half inches and a sixteenth. There. Mark that one. Now this is because we've got three and a half showing, we measure down from there again. Three and nine sixteenths. And again, three and nine sixteenths. And again, three and nine sixteen. Now that's the lower edge of our outside plank we've just marked there. So our top of our inner plank will be eleven sixteenths above that. which will be there. A reasonable amount of overlap. Some bigger boats, slightly bigger boats have three quarters of an inch. Larger boats have an inch. Smaller boats can be down to five eighths, but it it varies anyway. It's it's going to be within a sixteenth of an inch of that here and there. But that's a nice figure to work to. We may end up having a three quarter inch overlap on the planks as they come up. But also, we're sort of working on it a slightly smaller arc than the planks actually end up at. So it will probably end up being three quarters by the time the planking's out here and down to our mark. Now really that's the top four planks midships. So I think the thing to do now is if we wrap a few more battens around with the baton representing the plank overlap. That's going to give us the appearance from outside, the appearance from inside, and just see how those lines look. We can always curve a straight piece of timber around those then to pick up some idea of plank shape. I'll just tack them up midships. All right, that must still reach.
and that uh, one's broken. We have to move him forward a few inches in a sec. This is the sort of thing you want to come in on a Saturday morning and just play about with, with sort of no options and just so you can get it quietly get your head around it and and if it doesn't look right you don't have to rush to correct it and come up with a figure that's a, an even plank width we can jiggle it about a little bit but we want to aim for an average plank width for all the planks landing on the stem now the one thing that is going to affect this quite considerably is how far up the stem the garbage plank falls on the boat we looked at and measured the garboard plank came in pretty low. Um, it's generally considered to, to make as much of the garboard as you can to get narrower plank widths further up. So we're fighting a bit in the dark at the moment without having done anything about our garboard plank. But we can maybe move the battens up and see what looks right. We'll do the same on the transom and then we can offer up a garbled plank pattern just to see how it all lies together. Spot a bother with this baton, it's uh, broken at a critical point. Although that's not uh, ideal, it does give us a bit of a a picture of the the one inch wider top plank and then the, the next two three plank edges being uh, narrowing towards the stem fairly even here we just need to make sure we've got an extra inch on our top This one's being thrown off here because the, the baton's broken right at the bow. So we might just put a panel pin in there. But what we're looking for is an equal spacing between these planks. So if you say from the, the top there to the top there, that's three and an eighth. Top there to the top there is three. So we'll just level that one up. We've got an inch rubbing straight covering the top inch of that plank. Three and a sixteenth, three and an eighth, three and a sixteenth. So that's the sort of thing we're going for. 